which means it's going to have to have a lot more educational institutions that are built. Uh -huh. So as a form of investment, the Indian government is trying to build 1,500 universities compared to 370 now that exist now in the country. Not only that, but prestigious Indian institutions, the ones that we've heard of here in the United States, Institutes of Technology, the IITs, and the IIMs, the Institute of uh, Indian Management, they're being expanded from 7 to 15. It's, which it's, is, a, it's which a good is, plan. Can they make it happen? Well, I think India is taking a gamble on this, whether they can make it happen, but I think they recognized a couple of things. One, they were losing their students to external countries to other universities uh, into the Western world, they want to keep those students at home to help the industries at home. Second, they want to attract students from other countries to these universities back in India. Why? Because they know that the world is going through an economic crisis. Yeah. And as a result of that, education comes at a very high premium and a high cost factor in these Western countries. But in India, if you can get the same education for far less, then think about it. A lot of people will simply outsource their education, come to India for a few years to go to college or for their advanced degree, and who knows, maybe they'll settle in India and raise new businesses, and you can turn the tide backwards. I think this is pretty smart. Wait a second. I really think the plan is extremely ambitious. <laughs> I wish them the best of luck if they can make it happen. But I want to tell you the real world experience <laughs> for India. You folks remember the Hotmail founder by the name of Sabir Bhatia? Yes. So he went to Haryana to actually make a nano city. They signed an agreement in 2006. Well, Sabir Bhatia is leaving India. And the uh, project, nano project, is shut down. Why? Because he could not buy land from the formers. <laughs> <laughs> so all these universities, they can build, but where is the land coming from? So they have a little hiccup here. They need to make sure. You know, there are a lot of universities here in America that are interested in helping them achieve that particular there's, goal. There's actually but they don't want them to take the money home. So why would they come there? You know, I mean, let's face it. Yeah, education is a great endure, but it's a business. You're absolutely right. They need to right. make money. There were, they don't allow them. There were actually 50 foreign universities that expressed interest in setting up in India last year. And this is on the heels of President Obama's visit. You remember he went to mm -hmm. Delhi, he spoke at a university there. That yeah. caused a lot of buzz, and uh, universities expressed interest. But you're right, there is a lot of red tape. And there is a, a lot of ways of doing business in India that isn't the friendliest to outside yeah. parties. So maybe this is a way for the government to try to clean up the red tape and to try to make investment easier. Maybe this is the beginning of something good. One business that I think India can get into right now, for instance, folks, you know, between the Pepsi-Cola uh, Pepsi and Coca-Cola, they almost have all of that health drinks, the Gatorade and the Power Trade. That's, you know, Pepsi-Cola and Coca-Cola just own that. <laughs> Recently, by the way, the coconut water, which is also a health drink, that's what it says in here, some of the American athletes are drinking it, and both companies have now bought smaller companies that produce <laughs> the uh, Nariel Kapani is what they call it in India, but up here it's coconut water. Folks, it's going to be everywhere. And in India, there are plenty of cities that have coconuts. Because Your roadside India's, stands. You have palm trees, you have coconuts, yeah, and you have roadside India's stands. India is surrounded <laughs> three sides by the coastline. So they have plenty of tropics to grow that coconut. Now, that's what I think. Farmers will not have to lose their <laughs> land, and they can produce a tremendous amount of uh, health drink. That, I think, is doable. I just see people running around on beaches hoping to catch coconuts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a great business, by the way. I want to tell you, there are people who own the trees, investors that own the trees, and then there are small uh, farmers that will go in and take the have you seen uh, these, you know, these coconuts little down. teenagers and these boys and girls will just climb right up the tree yeah. and get the coconuts. It's, I mean, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great business <laughs> in India, but I think that will succeed unless they do something drastic with some land use programs politically. Then and only then 
uh, many of this infrastructure fights will not be yeah. there. Many of the big factories will be built. And, yeah, universities will be built, too. I do think that when I read the article, that was a thought in my head, too. We have to solve the problems at the head of the issues, right? Solve the infrastructure problems first, build the university institutions later. But you never know. They can do it simultaneously. Maybe. Hopefully. This is a great article written by a ninth grader. He tasted samosa and he loves it. And he wants it to be Mac samosa everywhere in the world. He said he did a little test with his friends. They are non-Indians. And he asked them, what is their best comfort food? They all said, it's donut. <laughs> he said, but when I shared with them a samosa, they all loved it. It can be a side dish. It can be a main dish. And it has the most beautiful shape, triangle. You know, <laughs> any time you find any food that has a shape, it can be fast food. It's fast food in India, but not here in America. Folks are encouraging McDonald's to see if they would like to come up with Mac Samosa. They have Mac Aluki Tiki. They, they do. They call it vegetarian burger. But they need to come up and call it Mac Samosa. You know... In England, it's sold everywhere. Indian food is the most popular food in England. Yeah, yeah. And I think samosa is a pretty popular here too. I'm just surprised we haven't seen samosa hut <laughs> or something show up like that. You go to Indian parties, you get samosas. Yeah. You go to Indian grocery stores, that's something they have on the aisle. That while you're shopping, maybe you want to take one of those. <laughs> but as a real meal, it really has uh, opportunity to because be. To be some, I won't call it a health food because it is deep fried, but it is vegetarian. Yeah. Uh, it does have healthy vegetables. It can be non veg. It can be non veg. We uh, sometimes will experiment with trying different yeah. recipes out. After all, it's just, a, uh, it's just a container for whatever you decide to fill into it. That's right. <laughs> Well, folks, I wanted to highlight uh, one of the emails that we got from our viewers last week. This is from Daniel Price, who says, Wow, what a difference from the same old news program. Thirsh in America rocks. <laughs> Thank you for the eye-opening experience with two hosts that are pleasant and fun. This is the kind of feedback we love to get from our viewers. and I.